Duraludon proves to be a major threat in the VGC 2020 metagame, flaunting the coveted Dragon Steel typing and impressive stats, for the most part. While we assumed that this thing would just be another bulky, awkward dragon, it soon became apparent that Duraludon wasn't just another Drampa or Dredagon, but a powerhouse of a special attacker. Hey everyone, I'm Marcos and I'm MoxieBoosted, and today I'll be giving you guys an in-depth analysis of Duraludon and its place in the VGC 2020 metagame. But before we get to that... 10,000 subscribers! Well, 10,100 at the time I'm writing this. I honestly never thought I'd get this far in my YouTube career, but the support of my channel has been incredible recently and people are finally watching the content that I've been putting out. And not a second too soon, because my part-time job at college recently cut my hours, meaning that YouTube is now my main source of income. And that's scary. So if you want to support me, you can do so by helping me reach 250 likes on this video and checking out my Patreon page, which is linked in the description. And to say thank you for helping me reach this milestone, I have a treat for all of you. This week I'll be giving you a competitive analysis of Charizard while eating Buffalo Wild Wings Blazing Wings. By the way, Buffalo Wild Wings, please sponsor me. These wings are 350,000 Scoville, which means it's about as strong as a Red Savina Habanero. And I won't get anything to cool off my tongue until I get through the entire script. You guys brought the sauce, so now I guess I'm bringing the sauce. It's gonna hurt, so get excited for that. My question of the day for you guys is, what is your initial opinion on Duraludon? I'll ask for your initial opinion now in the comment section, and then comment your updated opinion afterwards when we're through with the video. But with that out of the way, let's get into it. Also, this video might be slightly shorter than the usual ones because I need to catch up with all my work this week, but I'll try to make up for it with funny haha -ha moments. Duraludon has some pretty impressive stats with 70 HP, 95 attack for some reason, 115 defense, 120 special attack, 50 special defense, and 85 speed. Don't lie, no one expected this thing to be faster than 60 base speed at most. Its great physical bulk and special attack make this thing a force to be reckoned with, especially in Dynamax form. By the way, for the sake of relevance and time, I won't be covering this thing's Gigantamax form, as draining the opponent's PP on their moves is much less useful than lowering their attack stat with Max Wormwind in most cases. Let's talk about the bulk first though. Much like my personality, it's lacking anything special. Okay, so I can check that one off the list. With 75 HP and 115 defense, Duraldon could be a nuisance to knock out with physical attacks. With proper investment, it can take hits like Excadrill's high horsepower, Scrafty's close combat, and Life Orb Dragapult's phantom force. This thing's physical defense becomes even more troublesome to its opponents once it dynamaxes and gains double the HP it would normally have. Using this equation, we can extrapolate the sheer girth of this unit. Normally, Adamant Life Orb Excadrill's Max Quake can knock Duraldon over and make this thing's head retract back into its body out of pure fear, but once you click the big boy button, Duraldon can eat the hit no problem. Duraldon finds so much success this year because it's such a physically oriented format. Most of the top Pokemon are powerful physical attackers, meaning that there's a high demand for Pokemon that can eat a hit. So you might be wondering exactly, what would it take to topple such a sturdy and powerful Pokemon? I don't know, blow on it I guess. This thing has 50 special defense, and I mean, 70 HP is usable, but with 50 special defense, no way. Mudbrick can take a hit better than this thing, and it looks like it eats glue. That's why Duraldon has seen high usage when equipped with an Assault Vest, which can help mitigate the damage it takes from moves like Togekiss's Max Starfall and Special Dragapult's Draco Meteor. Okay, that's enough on Duraldon's bulk, let's get to the damage this thing can dish out. 120 special attack is very impressive, especially considering the hits this thing can tank. It's able to threaten one-hit KOs versus Pokemon like Whimsicott, Dragapult, and Gyarados. And it's able to do that with its powerful Dragon and Steel-type stab moves, as well as its coverage options. But Duraldon, in my opinion, suffers from 4 move slot syndrome. Basically, you want to run more moves to be prepared for everything, but the limit of 4 moves makes it really hard to decide on which moves to put on it. Do you want to run Draco Meteor and Dragon Pulse, or would you rather prefer one so you can run Protect? Do you want to run Snarl to support your team, or do you want to run Solar Beam so you can Dynamax and crush Gastrodon under your feet like the puny little slug boy he is? My point is the fourth move is always such a hassle because Duraldon pretty much needs a Dragon move, a Steel move, and an Electric move to function. Its two stab moves are obviously for dishing out as much pain as possible, and its Electric move is so it can reliably deal with flying types, especially Gyarados. But the last move is always super dependent on what team you run it on. But one thing I'll never understand is how some people manage to justify running Steel Beam to themselves. Like, yeah, I get it's a super powerful move, but Duraldon loses half of its health. What move did you drop to run Steel Beam? Is that your only Steel move, or do you just not care about beating Gyarados? I don't know. Keep that thing away from me, though. I don't think it's right. You know what isn't bad, though? It's Ability Stalwart. 
basically what this thing does is allow Duraldon to ignore any redirection moves like Follow Me or Rage Powder. So Hatterene and DD is a non-issue, and Togekiss can't protect Dragapult from Duraldon's powerful stab dragon type moves. This ability only serves to bolster Duraldon's great offensive potential. Speaking of which, most Pokemon with high attack or special attack stats are either super frail or criminally slow, but not Duraludon. 85 is actually a pretty good speed tier in this generation since lots of faster Pokemon straight up don't exist in the Gala region. While it's not the fastest, it's fast enough to take full advantage of partner Tailwinds or Max Airstreams to outspeed most Pokemon with very little investment. For example, this thing only needs 12 speed EVs under Tailwind to outspeed Jolly Dragapult, which is the fastest relevant Pokemon in the format. Its base 85 speed means it can also naturally outspeed major threats like Togekiss, Braviary, and even Gyarados. However, 85 isn't completely out of the realm of being a Trick Room Pokemon. Most non-Trick Room Pokemon in this format run at least a little bit of speed, so by giving this thing a quiet nature and no speed investment, it should be able to underspeed most Pokemon you come across. And while I'm not the biggest fan of trying to use a room service on a Pokemon, it wouldn't be the worst on Duraludon. But don't try it, it's it's probably bad. Just just forget I said that actually. Okay, so here's typically where I share a few movesets, but today it's gonna be one in-depth moveset and two generic movesets because I'm playing catch-up. But don't worry, the in-depth one is my favorite way to run Duraldon at the current time. First off, I want to discuss the generic sets. These sets don't have too much going on in them, but they're definitely the most effective way to run Duraldon in VGC. First up, we have the most popular set being Assault Vest. This Duraldon runs 252 HP, 244 special attack, and 12 speed with a modest nature. It is of course holding an Assault Vest, and its ability is Stalwart. Its moveset is Draco Meteor, Flash Cannon, Thunderbolt, and Snarl. Offensively, it can dish out some pretty huge damage with its high special attack stat, and can even eat up hits on the special side once Dynamaxed. However, even when not Dynamaxed, it can live hits that normal Duraldon wouldn't be able to. Max Special Attack Togekiss's Max Starfall will do 88% maximum, and Gastrodon's Earth Power will only knock it out if it's modest Max Special Attack, which isn't too common in the format given most Gastrodons prefer to run bulk. The only thing in this thing's moveset that isn't very common among other Duraldon sets is Snarl. Snarl allows Duraldon to lower both of the opponent's Pokemon's special attack stats supporting its team and granting it greater longevity. The 12th speed of course is to pair up with a Tailwind Sitter so you can outspeed Jolly Dragapult. The next set is a fast Life Orb Duraldon. It runs 252 special attack, 4 special defense, and 252 speed with a timid nature. Its item is Life Orb. Its ability is Stalwart, and its moveset is Draco Meteor, Flash Cannon Protect, and Thunderbolt. The Life Orb allows Duraldon to KO Dynamax Gyarados with Max Lightning and deal much more damage to Togekiss than it would otherwise, even KOing faster variants of Togekiss. This thing's speed also allows it to naturally outspeed Gyarados and most other Duraldon, allowing it to pick them off with a single Draco Meteor. Finally, I know I said Duraldon does really well with an Assault Vest to fix the issue of having such low special bulk, and it absolutely destroys things with a Life Orb equipped, but I have the most fun using Duraldon when it has a weakness policy. This Duraldon runs 252 HP, 140 defense, 100 special attack, 4 special defense, and 12 speed. Its moveset is Flash Cannon, Draco Meteor, Protect, and Thunder. However, you could drop off Thunder for Solar Beam on certain teams, but I'll get into that in a second. Speed-wise, this thing can of course outspeed Jolly Dragapult once you set up a Tailwind. Bulk-wise, this thing's able to take max attack high horsepower from Rhyperior or Excadrill, allowing it to easily proc its weakness policy. Once you Dynamax, that job becomes even easier because of your improved HP stat. At plus 2, this thing's max steel spike will one-shot Jolly Tyranitar, Babiri Berry Hatterene, and has a 68.8% chance to one-shot Babiri Berry Togekiss. Without the weakness policy boost, Max Lightning has an 18.8% chance to one-shot Dynamax Gyarados coming off of Thunder. However, if you have another way of beating Gyarados on your team, you could try to run Solar Beam instead. The reason you might want to try this is because Duraldon can one-shot Dynamax Rhyperior after a weakness policy boost with max overgrowth. You could also just just run Rotom Mo though, which can do both, but Weakness Policy Duraldon is just too much fun, just take my word for it. Finally, partners, Duraldon can really benefit from having a Whimsicott at its side. The instant speed boost from Prankster Tailwind makes this thing a threat to nearly every Pokemon in the format. Along with that, Whimsicott has access to the move Fake Tears, which harshly lowers the target's special defense, meaning Duraldon can pick up some cheeky KOs when you double into a Pokemon. Whimsicott also has the potential to KO Gastron with Stab Grass moves. This can be huge because Gastron not only has Stab super effective moves against Duraldon, but they're typically special attackers, so they have the potential to one-shot it. Speaking of Gastrodon counters, Rotom Mo can deal with it effectively with its stab Leaf Storms. Not only that, but it has the ability Levitate, meaning it can switch on ground-type moves for Duraldon and be completely immune to them. Another helpful fairy type is Grim Snarl, which can set up priority light screens and reflects to ensure Duraldon lives any hit that would otherwise be threatening from its opponents. And Togekiss's support cannot be understated. While Togekiss does not get Tailwind this generation, it can redirect and soak up threatening ground and fighting type moves while eating special hits in general. 
It can also Dynamax and click Max Airstream to boost its entire team's speed. But that's really all I have to say about Duraludon today. Looking at the script, it's already 4 pages, so I guess it's about as long as any other analysis I typically do. But what do you guys think about Duraludon in the current format? Let me know in the poll above and give me your opinions in the comment section down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video at any point in time and subscribe for more competitive Pokemon content. Like I said, YouTube is now my main source of income, so to support me, consider turning on notifications so you won't miss a video. If you want to take that support a step further, check out my Patreon page. By supporting me there for as low as $1 a month, you get access to my exclusive Patreon team building and team testing live streams, and see your name at the end of my videos in this thank you card. Check out my Discord and Twitch channel as well, all those will be linked in the description down below as well. But with that, I want to say thank you for watching and have a nice night. Also, I'm live streaming the Charizard video challenge tomorrow night around 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. So don't be late for that. It's going to be great. Bye. It's